leads me to our first point. Okay, our first point that says, having a quiet spirit does not mean surrendering your voice, but it does mean knowing when to hold your tongue. Amen. So now moving on to verse 3, it says, your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as braided hair and wearing gold, perfumes. Instead, it should be that of your inner self. I love this. God is not calling our girls, the girls of the house, to look bad. No, we got to look good. We got to take care of ourselves. It's a good thing. We're the daughters of a king, so we got to look good. But at the same time, he said, don't trust on your outward beauty, for that would not last. But your inward beauty. You know, if, if, if beauty would bring happiness, then the Hollywood people would be the happiest people on earth. But they're not. We already know their marriages are not good. So in order for us to have good, healthy relationships, good, steady jobs, good lives that actually have an impact in the kingdom, we have to have that unfading beauty. And this is what God says. Point number two, having a quiet spirit does not mean tolerating evil, but it does mean eager to do good. And then he goes to verse six that says, for this way the holy woman of the past who put their hope in God used to make themselves beautiful. You know what made them beautiful? I hope you didn't miss this. Was their hope was in God. That was the difference. Their trust was in God. That's what made them beautiful. It was not the adornment, but it was their trust was in God. And he says, they were submissive to their own husbands like Sarah who obeyed Abraham and called him on her master. You know, and, and our point it says that we do not tolerate evil, but we are eager to do good. You know, Sarah made a lot of mistakes, and, and some of us remember the mistakes that Sarah made, but Sarah did a very important thing. You know, her husband received an amazing promise from God, and he said, Abraham, leave everything, and I will build you into an amazing nation. And so he lives, but then he goes, and there's a famine. You know, isn't that like sometimes we get a promise, but then there's some desert time, there's some time of preparation. So Abraham faces this time where he has fear. And so he goes to Egypt to find food, but he has such a good looking wife that he's like, Lord, if I tell them that this is my wife, they're going to kill me. So he tells Sarah, Sarah, uh, let's just, you know, you're my sister, we're sisters anyway. So let's just, let's just omit the minor detail that you're my wife. And, I, and to make a long story short, Sarah decides to say, Master, I will, I will follow your lead. I will cover you. You know, there's times in our lives that obviously this was a, in a different ages, different time, different scenario. But there's time in our lives where we need to, to, to choose to cover, to choose to protect, to choose to see people in our lives, whoever it is, in the place where God has a promise for them, but they're in fear, and we're choosing to sow, like Pastor Kerry said, we're choosing to sow into their life encouragement. We're choosing to see them the way God sees you, because God sees your potential. So I want to encourage you in your relationships. Choose to see the good thing. Seek to do the right thing. Because it will produce good fruit. You know, I love that when I became a Christian, Jesus did not say, Angelica, this is wrong with you. This, 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 and the list goes on. But he says, honey, I see your potential. You're my daughter. Let me see what I'm going to do with this crazy Colombian chick. <laughs> but anyway, but you know what? He's so amazing. So, and that's what God is calling us to do as women of God, whatever your position of influence it is. If it is with a two-year-old or if it is with a grandparent, if it is whatever your position of influence, if you are a leader, whatever it is, how can you find the practice? Precious things that God has already placed in the heart of the people around you. And how you can choose to cover, protect, encourage, and build. Because that's what God is calling us to do. As the, that is the submission that God is calling us to do. You know, when women come into a room, we always set up the atmosphere. So whatever the atmosphere you're in, God is calling us to sow not tomatoes, <laughs> but God is calling us to sow peace, love, mercy, grace, because that would produce fruit, and that, would, that is the unfading beauty that a woman of God brings to the table. Amen? And that leads us to point number three that says, having a quiet spirit does not mean being weak-minded, but seeking to be like-minded. Love it. 
You know that being like-minded, that comes from the word in Greek, and I know I'm going to mispronounce it, homophron, the meaning harmonious. Being like-minded means being in agreement in one accord. Ladies, I want to invite you to bring unity to the world in your life, whatever it is. Bring harmony in your life. Did you realize that what caused Pentecost, everybody knows what Pentecost was. Pentecost was the greatest manifestation of so many things on earth that was incredible. It was the presence of God in an unbelievable way. And you know what brought Pentecost to earth? You know what brings revival in our lives? Unity. The Bible says that we're all in one accord together. So I want to encourage you, wherever you are in your lives, bring unity, bring harmony. And I want to encourage you right now that it's a process. Love the message that Pastor Estobo said. It is a process. Because I don't always bring harmony. I don't always do the right thing. I actually mess up quite often. But I tell you what, my Savior is gracious, is precious, is abundant in mercy. You know, he knew me so well that he said he's, there is a new grace every morning. You know, because he knew I needed it every morning, brand new. You know, his mercies are new. So I want to encourage you where you are. But at the same time, we got to grow, girls. We're not just babies anymore, but we got to take a stand as women of God. And we want to say, you know what? I'm choosing to do the right thing. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sow harmony in the midst of war. Amen? And it leads us to point number four that says, having a quiet spirit that not, does not mean avoiding conflict, but it does mean communicating from a position of love. You know, the Bible says in 1 Peter 3, 8, it says, finally, all of you girls, be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. Wow. Big word right there. Peter always, he always takes it the extra mile. I love it. You know, I, I, you know, the Bible said that love the lovable. And that, you know, really the Bible says love the unlovable. Because what merit is to love the lovable. People that are lovable, I mean, they know they're going to be treated well. They're lovable. They kind of expect. In loving relationships, you kind of know. I mean, it's kind of obvious. But God is calling us to do the extra mile. He said, those people that are unlovable in your life, not only I want you to ignore them. I'm pretty good at that. I, I, I got that master. You know, I can't ignore people that are annoying. You know, but God is saying, no, move on, grow up. You know, I want you to not just ignore, but I want you to sow seeds of love in their lives. I want you to love the unlovable. I want you to, to, to humble yourself and to go beyond what your strength can do. Because that is the fun, the, the amazing thing. In my strength, I can only love the lovable. I promise you, ladies, I cannot go any farther. But with the Holy Spirit living in me, the power of his word, the name of Jesus in me, the anointing that flows from above with a price that was paid with a high price because we were not cheap ladies. We, he paid the highest price. It was his life. He did not hold back on anything. It was his life. So the same power that lives in all of us, the Holy Spirit, the big helper, that can give you the grace for you to move on and to, and to grow up into an amazing, beautiful woman of God with an unfading beauty. That woman that when it comes in the room, there's harmony. That woman that it comes in, people know they, talk, they walk the talk and not just the talk. Amen? And listen to the promise. I love this promise. It's beautiful. It says... For the eyes of the Lord, I know many of you have heard this, for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ear are attentive to their prayers. You know, how many of us want to hear that from God? I'm attentive to your prayers. And he is because in Jesus Christ, he has made us righteous. But he needs to use us to be a blessing. Ladies, if, if you did not hear anything today, but you hear this, and the whole reason why Jesus died on the cross, the whole reason why he wants to give us that unfading beauty is not because of you. 
but it's for the people around you. We are already saved. We already know Jesus. We already have his mercy. We already know his grace. But there's people around us that the only Jesus they're going to see is you. The only Bible they're going to read is your life. So ladies, we got to take that responsibility and move forward, advancing the kingdom of God. It's, you know, the kingdom of God is not a club because there are people that are going to hell. So we want to make sure that, that a grace abundant in our love, that we make it extensive to the people in our lives, the people that God has placed in our lives. Amen. So now, um, before we go any farther, um, as we continue in, in worship, because we're not done yet, we're not done yet, I want you to write where you are. I want you to bow your heads. If you're listening online or if you're watching by video, please continue in an attitude of worship because this is the, the best part. This is the icing of the cake. Just take a moment to, and just feel his love. Feel his presence. And we're just going to pray. Father God, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you for sealing in our hearts, Father, the word that has been spoken, your word, Father God. I pray that would not be this, the same, Father, because you have done something in our hearts, Father God. Father, thank you that we're a mighty woman of God, Father, moving forward the kingdom cause, Father. Father, thank you for revealing to us the secrets of your heart and showing us your love, Father. Father, we honor you and we praise you and we, in a faith-filled woman of God, said amen. amen. And let's put our hands together. For everyone that joined us online or via video.